Hello everyone, hope you're all doing okay. Uh, time for our next painting and it's it's of Silverdale in, in the Lake District. Um, it has stumped me a little bit this one. I, I think when you're working from photographs, um, sometimes it's difficult if the photographs are not great um, to get an idea. So I've, I've just sketched out this one, I've just sketched out this little um, thumbnail and try to pare it down to basics because that's what's been missing. I think and need, need a vision of, of 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 how I'm going to paint it to, to get some sort of depth and mood to to the painting. Uh, so that's what I'm working from. I'll just pop that there, and I can see that. I've just sketched it out in pencil. Um, the cottages haven't helped as well. As lovely as it is, this place they they're very regular. The, the 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 two straight really, <laughs> which is what you want if you if you've got a building, but they they just it's a little bit too regular for me. But um, we're gonna have to work with that because that's how they are. Um, so starting with the sky, I'm gonna use the mop brush. I'm gonna start with some ultramarine. It's got a big puddle of that made up. I'm just working from the right hand side, I'm going to just push some clouds into there, some sky into there. Working quickly, it's dry paper so I've got to have a really wet brush. And then I'm going to grab some raw sienna for the warmth in the clouds. And just push that on. There's a bit of blue on the, the brush so it mixes a little bit. Just touching the underside of the clouds there. Some Windsor blue. Just whack that in there. Just being careful around the chimneys there. There we go. And I'll just, just change brush. I'll just clean that raw sienna up a little bit. A bit warmer. Just pull it across and down. Gonna make the cloud a bit. So some pens grey into the ultramarine there. See if I can get that making some sort of cloud, that rain cloud shape there. Just soaking up a little excess paint there, and then I'll draw draw that raw sienna day. Yeah, it goes a bit green there because there's some trees. So I've just pushed as a as a start. I've just pushed some sap green in. We're going to go back into that area in a bit, and then there's the Lake District um, feature over there of. Uh, distant lands so I've I've just put some ultramarine there like that. And then there's a little break of light so if I just put some raw sienna there so that the the light's just catching the land there and it's quite a nice little feature that good so I pull in into the water now we're just gonna so this is bit is water just gonna grab reflecting that raw sienna just grab that pull it along and then the blue
So it's breaking onto some little rocks there. So I'll just break these little side skips there. Just clean that up. Okay, that's looking all right. Just having a little bit of a loop round, see if it's taking up the excess paint there. Right, okay. So for the cottages, I'm going to use the ultramarine. So keeping that theme of ultramarine, but I'm going to add uh, some light red to it. Let's see if I can turn it into a, a nice grey colour. Gonna leave the the roofs of the cottages white for now, and then some little details of windows and and little porches that they've got. We can leave the certain parts of that white as well. So I've gone a bit bluer there because it's going away, so I'm going more towards the blue. And then in front of it, they've got like a bit of a, a stone wall. So I'm going to start making up like a, a warm grey now. So with the ultramarine and the crimson and a little touch of, of yellow ochre there. It's a bit purpley that, needs more yellow ochre in it. So this is the Silverdale beach bit there, the rocky little pebble beach. So that's just a that mixture just really paled down a bit because I just want to find my way with it for now. So we've got that purpley colour, ultramarine, crimson, yellow ochre. I've just dropped some of the raw sienna in there and it's making a nice warm grey. So that can be for giving us a bit of perspective and bringing the beach closer in our, in our view. Don't have to be, it's only the first wash so we don't have to be particularly careful with anything. There we go. So. Oh, and then the, yeah, forgot the, the the end of the building. So with the burnt sienna and ultramarine, that's not it. That's crimson. That don't it. Just making a, a darker mix because that's away from the light so that can be a darker tone than, than the other parts. Good and then I can just, so the little The little rooftops that jut out there, we can just put a little shaded part to that as well. And I'll do the other chimneys so that we can start getting a feel for the lighting of, of the place then. And just 
judge away with what we need to do to it. So they're blurring a little bit, but that's good. I like that. Going to go and get some green. So sap green and burnt sienna. Make a nice olivey green colour. If I can. And then just framing that bit of the rooftop there. So these are trees. And at this stage it's it's important outcome. Start and try and get a little bit fussy then. So just stop yourself and just think of the picture as a whole. As a simple, like a graphic in a way. So that's coming down onto the beach. That row of trees there. And it's going away from us as well. So if I add some blue to it now and cool it down. It's looking all right, that. Good. I'll just go. So we've got that yellow bit, haven't we? I forgot about that. So if I just put that in there, so that the light's catching that land there. Just put that in first. And then if I grab some ultramarine with a bit of light red in it, so I can like a, a blue-grey colour. Whoops. Ed butted the camera then. Just whack that land in there. That's looking all right, that. So I can add, start adding a little bit more feature to this, this rocky part there, it's a bit like that. And there's some more green on this side. I've just put that in, mixing it on the paper, so sap green with a bit of burnt sienna mixed in there. And then I'll darken that later. Okay, so I've got a look for a mid-tone there on these, these houses. Just define that a bit better. So these little chimney pots and chimneys. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Accuracy. <laughs> it's going a bit stronger there. And then you've got these little, it's a bit warm that, so if I just cool that down, just trying to get the effect of lighting underneath these. I don't think they have the eyebrow windows, but. They've got these little shapes. And then further away, just less and less defined. And then uh, they've got a little porch, so there's the right hand side will have a little cast 
shadow on it. Don't want to be fussy, but try and get so that we can recognise what it is. Good. And then there's quite a bit of colour going on. So they've got, there's a few red, red and green sort of accents, I think they would be, where people have got stuff growing. So they've got a little extended garden. So I could put that in and then some green. So the sat green and burnt sienna. They've got some grass on this little rock wall. And as I'm painting, I'm just sitting back and just viewing the hall just so that I'm not getting bogged down in detail because it's that's probably what's thrown me all along it's just too much detail and we need the thing as a whole to work that's looking all right so that's a bit of a stone wall uh, just put some more color on that And I just make that green a bit darker, so a bit stronger tone. Good. So I love thinking about the beach now. I think um, we've got some colouring on the beach so there's like a algae moss or whatever it is it's a bit, a bit strong that just tear that up. And then I think I'll add some texture to the uh, to the beach. So if I get the raw sienna and I'll just add some shapes for rocks here. Quite random little strokes I think a good idea and they're going smaller as they go away you're hoping that by doing that the, the brush and the paper give you a little indication of what the rock shapes should be and then I've got a, a warm grey as well Start just putting that in. And 
and then the next stage would be to add a, a really dark tone to that. But I'm just going to use the horizontal stroke to get like a, it's a flatter part of the beach there. Small rocks, we don't need to do those individually. blue in it Make that grey cooler so by adding blue to it I'll work in the distance there and just see if I can bring the edge so a stronger tone trying to define the edge of where the beach is in the water there with that colour I can start just, just defining a few things around there. So that's that warm but cool grey colour now, it's got more blue in it. So it's just adding a, a strength of tone to, to show shading and, and different things. And it's it's about judging what to do, what not to do, and keep sitting back and and, and uh, assessing it really, and just seeing what you should and shouldn't do. There's a bit more colour at the front of the house, isn't there? And I drop some red in there. little bit of winter blue, the paint of the woodwork. And this M1 has got a bit of ivy growing on it so we can just add some green over the top. Not too much, it doesn't want to stand out too much. going to make a dark up so if I use let's say ultramarine and light red that's neat it's like it's like gouache that it was that thick And then with that same dark, 
ultramarine and light red I'm just going to emphasize this a little bit more so almost like as if he was doing a pen and wash just just giving a little bit of contrast with the um, the colours Oops. A good brush helps, so something you can put colour on in big areas and, and then with points as well. Going back to the green, so I've sneakily just opened a little bit of uh, hooker's green. So I'm going to use hooker's green with, with the light red and just darken. Add a bit of contrast there and there, I think. Let's give that a bit of depth. There we go. with the dark so ultramarine and um, light red just add in these very dark tones to these little rocks and stones in the water there. So that's a cool grey and I'm just adding it to, to just add a little bit of variation and form to the, the sh this uh, pebble beach. And being just again assessing, keep looking from a little bit of back and seeing where things could be a bit darker or a bit lighter.
So that just gives a bit of progression into the distance for the water as well. Just grabbing the winds of blue again. I'm just gonna just see if we can just pick that out a little bit. So I'm sort of working upside down. So I'll put the colour on and then soften the top edge of it really there. It just just punches the contrast out from the roof and the sky there. I think that'll do it actually. I think that's enough. Right, we got there eventually. And I'm just all as I go along, I'm just bearing in mind the whole thing rather than being too particular. Um, so hopefully you can have a go at that and uh, you enjoy doing it and let me have a look at uh, what you've done.